Welcome back to Satisfactory Update 4. Now I have a poll out for you guys to uh, make your decision on whether or not I should have the camera on or not. Uh, I suspect that it's probably better to have it off in the videos, but maybe I'll just use it in the intros like this because I'm going to turn it off. Um, to get to this episode number four has been uh, a long and arduous process. I have built many, many, many things, and you can go watch the uh, stream archive, the Let's Play companion series. Pardon. Uh, to see what I have done in that period of time. Now, in this episode, I will showcase as a kind of a verbose uh, thing what I've done since then. So uh, let's get right to it and I'll shut off the camera so that it does not uh, stay a distraction down here. So first of all, we need to pop on out to the uh, new outpost that I built with uh, rails. That is the... Um, or actually, we need to go there, not that one. We need to go to that one first. Our old uh, quickwire outpost uh, here in the Dune Desert, right below the, uh, or rather up on the uh, cliff there, has been removed, and there is now simply a miner there, which it, whoa, which is mining uh, the Kateria Moor, and the train that is currently uh, clipping inside of uh, the train we're driving. Uh, is taking Kateria more with it and we are then going to move to the Kateria factory outpost. I'm guessing that it doesn't work so long as a train is being loaded. That shuts down the entire facility so uh, we'll just have to wait until that's done. We should leave the station be a little bit quicker than the other one. Yep. Because we don't have any cargo. Thus, our train is a wee bit uh, less heavy. Uh, because of not having to redo this, I added the loop down there uh, for these trains so that they didn't have to go all the way into the station area to get back out. Uh, also, Coffee Stain Studios has fixed the uh, bug with the uh, switches that were, didn't work when they were placed on the concrete foundation seams, so that part now works. The roundabout are here, however, does not work as it should, at least it works, but it has certain issues that I am not sure how to fix. I might have to redo the entire crossing. The question is, how? And, uh, yeah, um... I suspect that I might have to look up some uh, inspiration elsewhere to find the uh, best way of doing that. Uh, but I don't consider that a priority right now. It works, even though it does make the trains do some weird things every now and then, like take us on some bizarre roundabout trips. But it, it the, the main thing is it works, so um, the trains are able to, uh, to travel. The train ahead of us is the one that is transporting the quick wire from this outpost, which is a small base all by itself, to be honest. Um, but we'll get into the details when we get here. It's taking that quick wire back to the main base, into the new uh, platform that is dedicated for that. So on this outpost, we have the uh, the. Uh, Caterium ore coming in, and you can see the belt coming down here, and uh, that one is going down to this row of uh, no less than 25 refineries using the pure Caterium ingot recipe. There's another belt coming here, which is from another Caterium node, which is um, located handily down here, 
uh, underneath the coastline. It is down there. I'll show it to you afterwards. With this next line of 25 Katerium ingot refineries that are also using the pure recipe. On top of that, we also have these final refineries here. Um, I don't remember exactly how many they are, but I think there are 15. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 15 indeed. So there will be a grand total of 65 refineries here using the pure Caterium ingot recipe. Next part of this facility is... I'm not going to go out to that node. It's a pure node. It's hidden underneath a rock, so if you want to unlock it, you will have to bring a nobelisk so that you can blow it away. And I'm just taking the, uh, the ore in, which they still haven't fixed the bug of the phasing lift stuff. But it's taking it in here and then bringing it to the line. The reason for these final refineries is that these are Mark II miners overclocked to 250%, which produce 200, uh, 600 each. When I get to upgrade these to Mark III, each of them will produce 180 extra in excess, which means we will have 360 more Caterium uh, ore which is exactly what we need for this line of 15 refineries to have the maximum output of 780 uh, Caterium ingots from this refinery. So yes, you do need 65 refineries to get 780 ingots, but it is a far superior recipe than the regular smelting recipe. Uh, you get a lot more ingots uh, by using that recipe. As I can show you by building a small smelter here. This one gives 12 Caterium per minute for 24 ore. This one gives 15 per minute for 45 ore. You can do the maths yourself, but just by seeing the numbers, this gives uh, a lot more. Let's go down to the um, water uh, area for this. I built fences there because I don't want to be propelled out into the sea. For the uh, two lines of 25, we need exactly 600 water, which is handily enough exactly what a Mark II pipeline, pipeline is able to contribute. Now with the new... Uh, snapping of the water extractors I am able to make a pretty decent looking um, uh, water extraction areas and each of these are overclocked to 166.6667% or rather I just put in the number 200 cubic meters per minute. So three of these will produce 600. If you don't want to overclock them you can just double the amount uh, and uh, block them at 100 per minute. Uh, I happened to bother go slug hunting. So three of these go to that pipeline. I had to add the um, foundations there. I suppose I could remove them again now, but the foundations there were so I could get a um, snap point because this pipe is too long uh, without that. The other three here are providing the water for that line. And the final two are providing the water that is necessary for the final line. As you can see, I've set these to 150%, which means that I'm getting 360 in total from these two uh, water extractors, which is, again, what you need, because you need a 1-1 ratio of water and caterium ore to use the uh, pure caterium ingot recipe. Moving right along, since I have multiple things I want to show in this episode, and I don't want the episode to be too long, but you guys know me, it probably will be 50 minutes or something like that. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time and it certainly won't be the last time. But at least I am doing my best at trying to keep them uh, down. Uh, the ingots from the refineries are coming out uh, onto the other belts here. and they are, Or rather, that they are coming out onto this belt since all of these will fulfill one belt. And then go down into... Um, how did I do that? The ingots are on... I'm taking them out, splitting them over there, um, and then putting them into lines of 13 constructors each. 
uh, and I'm using the basic quickwire recipe. Uh, now you can replace that recipe, I believe, with um, the fused quickwire. Currently, I'm producing 3,000 quickwire in this uh, facility. But if you add the copper ingots to the um, to the mix, whereas if you add the copper ingots to the mix, I would strongly recommend using either the pure copper recipe, if you can be bothered by putting up as many refineries as that involves, that's a lot. Or you can use the foundries uh, and then use the copper alloy ingot, since there's plenty of iron around uh, and this will give you lots and lots and lots of copper. So when I need more quickwire, I have to redo this and note my use of the word when, not if. 3000 quickwire is not going to be enough. So when I replace all of this with the uh, a pure, uh, no, the uh, copper alloy ingot uh, and then add copper into the mix, I, all of this has to be torn down then and replaced with assembler so this output will become even larger. I will be producing a total of, and hopefully that should be enough, 9,360 quickwire, which is 12 Mark V belts, uh, and that requires 104 assemblers. Huh. Uh, that also means that I have to probably make two or three train stations here, because it's just going to be way too much to deal with uh, to put all those belts into uh, each uh, or, or into like I'm taking two lines into each station uh, currently which means I would have to have eight platforms um, just dedicated to that so that's six more platforms here and there is no way I can make room for that in the main base so yeah more stations here uh will probably be needed for that and also more stations in the base to accept the quick wire will probably also be required um i'm gonna skip a bit ahead of myself to the uh to the last point uh because i don't really want to uh to go out into the world again unless i need to so we'll head on over to the um red swamp because that's where uh, I am currently building. Because my current project is something that involves more alumina. And, uh, yeah. Can't use the uh, X menu while I'm on the train. That's a bit annoying. But that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll get there. You can just enjoy the train ride. For those of you who have been uh, watching the streams, you have probably enjoyed these train rides more than once, since this is basically how I... Uh, what I used to do when I take breaks for more than five minutes. I uh, let the viewers have a train ride. I mean, trains are cool and all that. They are not that cool to build, though, that is, the train lines. And uh, this train line here wasn't so bad to build, but the one that I'm building now, which we are headed out to, that's not the most enjoyable thing I've done in a while. So, um, let's see if the roundabout works. It does. Need to turn off the autopilot when we get to the top of the... Uh, see here. I'm gonna turn it off after we have crossed this, so we'll turn it off now, which will give me manual control over the train, which is probably a huge surprise to everyone. As you can see in the distance there, there is building going on. Need to start braking here, because otherwise I'm gonna end up down in the aluminium outpost, which I do not want to. Sorry for being quiet, I am concentrating a bit. I believe I need to set this switch to go there. 
might actually have been set to the right thing, but it shouldn't have been because every time a train goes down there, it switches the switch back. No, so that was the correct setting for the switch. So what I'm doing over here is I'm building a new uh, railroad. And this rail is supposed to go to bauxite nodes, um, which we need to uh, tap so that we can make more um, of the uh, alumina. Oh, I don't want to crash into that train. More of the alumina. And I'll probably use the uh, the uh, sloppy alumina recipe, which adds 15 water to 15, 15 bauxite, which gives us uh, a fair bit of the alumina solution compared to uh, the default recipe, which also requires that dreaded silica, which I don't want to uh, bother with out there. Uh, I might take the bauxite down to the um, aluminium outpost that we already have here and make more of the uh, alumina down there but I don't think I will do that because it's just uh, a bother to be honest so let's uh, rename the train again since I had to tear it down there is no way to get back and we'll go back to the base because there are many things that I need to show you in the main base itself there have been changes that is for sure I did unlock one new alternate recipe, which is the heat exchanger. Because I have unlocked some new technologies in the hub. One of them being the last tier 7 that I needed. And one of them being a tier 8 recipe. So we are finally at the point where I can actually start demonstrating tier 8. Which is not at all bad. I'm quite happy with that. Um... The uh, heat exchanger requires three aluminium casings and four rubber and it will then produce two heat sinks from that which it produces at a rate of 10 per minute. So that recipe seems good. I don't remember the basic recipe for the heat exchange for the, yeah for the heat sinks not the heat exchangers. But it is at least much better. Uh, than the basic recipe as far as I can remember. That being said, I don't remember exactly how the recipe is now because they did change the recipe for the heat sinks, that is the basic one. They changed that in the new uh, update 4. I think perhaps the sound is a little bit loud. Um, not on the music, but the train is making a lot of uh, noise. Although maybe that's not a problem because now we're going to leave the train. Yeah, so the train is a bit loud. I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, we can look at the train station first before we drive out. What I did out here is that I've uh, set up some uh, new belts. Because uh, the silica outpost that we had up there that was supplying uh, silica to the uh, base, that now goes here. I think I already demonstrated that in episode number three. Uh, if I didn't, then it's basically just bringing silica in here instead of bringing it out to the red swamp since it's no longer needed there. And it is needed in here for the uh, silicon circuit boards. So I'm very, very sure that I showed that in the last episode. I am also bringing down the aluminium casings, which they have finally fixed the texture of, but they haven't fixed the hitbox. The hitbox is um, 90 degrees wrong, but they at least don't look like they are some weird, bizarre uh, hallucination triangles anymore. There's also quick wire coming here. So there is a lot of belts here. I did fix. There was a there was an error on the quick wire belts. One of them was skewed, so that skewed all of them. So I fixed them so that all of them are now going in the correct uh, angle. And uh, the aluminium casings are of course uh, going out over there. But we'll revisit that area when we get back to the base because there is one more thing that I had to do outside of the base area. Which thankfully isn't far away though, but it does require 
driving in the dunes, which is not always the optimal way of driving, but um, that's what you get for starting in the dune desert. Now, some of you may notice that there have been changes to the factory to our left, but we'll get back to that as well. So we're back at the uh, smelting array. And we're going to go out to the um, quartz outpost that we had over uh, at the uh, bottom of that mesa sticking up in the uh, distance there. And uh, we'll have some bouncing around and uh, let's put this back up. And this is why I'm not that particularly fond of driving in the dunes because that tends to happen often in the dunes. Whee! I can't use my usual route because that has been blocked. So I've cleared out the uh, resource well here for water and uh, we will be tapping that eventually. Now these uh, constructors, they used to be a couple of these making uh, silica. None of them are making silica anymore. All of them are making raw quartz. Uh, no, quartz crystal, I mean. And one of them is slightly uh, underclocked because uh, we are supplying 360 of the raw quartz. Yeah, I know what's. I know what sound is too loud. It's the uh, factory volume. Let's set that to 55. That should help a bit. I think my voice is loud enough, so I don't think it has been overpowering my voice. But uh, yeah, yeah, now it's better. So we have a total of one, two, and uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine point six, and the point six, of course, being the one that is underclocked to sixty percent. And each of them are manufacturing uh, twenty-two and a half per minute. So uh, I don't remember the exact number, but you can do twenty-two point five times nine point six, and you will get that number of raw quartz, which is a little bit of overproduction for what we need in the base. But the raw quartz is imperative for our production lines inside of the main base. There are some cleaning up to do. Uh, over here and there. Uh, actually, there is a lot of cleaning up to do in many places now. Uh, but I want to make sure that I get to the tier 8 content as quickly as possible and can show that off. And uh, cleaning up the factory, that's, uh, that's not a priority right now, to be honest. I am thinking that I would like to make, uh, depending on popularity uh, and how people... Um, react to that. I am thinking that I might want to do uh, a completely new base. Uh, the Dune Desert has been uh, fun. Uh, I like the color schemes here. Um, but with the, all of the new changes that have happened in Update 4, it might be an idea to have a new tutorial series. So I would like to uh, get some feedback on that from you guys as well. Uh, that also includes feedback on the camera use. Uh, do you want me to use camera in my videos? I will not use it in all videos, regardless of the feedback, because in uh, many games it would just be a distraction. But for instance here inside this factory, if I put the camera on again, it is not really that distracting, because it's basically, I've placed it so that it's just above my hand, so that means that it shouldn't be distracting for you as viewers when I'm playing the game. Like, when I swing the sword, that should be fine. Uh, but of course, um, I won't... I When I record, I want to be a bit more relaxed than when I stream, so maybe not have to... Uh, to uh, uh, make sure that my hair is okay and all kinds of all that stuff. Sometimes it's nice to just... Uh, you know, especially in these times, it's nice to just ignore things like that one or two days anyhow this is the new subfloor this used to hold it didn't used to be this big at all as a matter of fact the foundations used to stop just about here or something i think yeah it's, they stopped here this was the last foundation 
and I had a walkway down. Um, so this subfloor is one tile higher than the subfloor underneath the other factory floor, but that is necessary since this uh, floor above us needs um, more products since it's got a lot of manufacturers. So um, it might, maybe it should even have been four high, but I think three is sufficient. Up to the main factory floor here. These are the crystal oscillator machines. They have been revamped. We will get back to them. These I've already demonstrated. These are the ones making the circuit boards. Um, these are the machines uh, making computers where we're using quick wire, circuit boards and rubber. And I do have some circuit boards to spare and I have a lot of quick wire to spare yet. And I also have rubber to spare. I haven't updated my spreadsheet, so I don't have the exact numbers. I am going to do that when I have completed this episode, because I need that spreadsheet to be updated. The next production line here is the AI limiters. And that's why I had the constructors on the subfloor. They are temporary. Trademark. In as much that I needed copper sheets to make AI limiters, and I needed the AI limiters quickly because of the um, because of the uh, recipe that we're going to go back to. AI limiters are useful in using the alternate crystal oscillator recipe. So I have changed the crystal oscillator recipe in all of these six manufacturers. I've even moved them one because they were on the wrong grid. So Instead of making one oscillator per, I'm now making three oscillators per. And this is also where the crystal, uh, the quartz crystal came into the picture. So this recipe is using quartz crystal, rubber and AI limiters to make crystal oscillators. And I'm making a little bit more of the AI limiters than I need so that I have a little buffer of those as well. Uh, and crystal oscillators, they are used in another recipe. I was using them earlier to uh, to make the um, computers, but I've moved to the Caterium computer, which is the recipe you saw. The basic crystal oscillator recipe takes quartz crystal, less of it, but it also takes cable and reinforced iron plates per uh, two crystal oscillators, but it only produces one per minute. So uh, from going from six to 18 of the oscillators, I'm quite satisfied with that. I also have this buffer chest of them, so it's uh that's a nice thing to have uh i'm also keeping a buffer chest of computers uh i'm making quite a few of these actually but again i don't remember the exact numbers the next line here uh, that would be the ai limiters i have a buffer of those as well as mentioned i don't know if i need the buffer but at least i have something in storage if I need the AI limiters in other recipes. Sadly, and I'm kind of miffed about that, it doesn't show here in game what the AI limiters are used in. That would be a great addition to the game uh, because it means that you wouldn't have to go to a calculator site to check that out. The f yeah, how many do I have of those? I have six of them. The final line involves eight manufacturers and that was the uh, a turning point for where we could uh, start with tier 8. Here I am making radio control units and I'm using the basic recipe for these as well. Why am I using the basic recipe? Well, if you look at the manufacturer and we take the alternate recipe, which is radio control system, it requires crystal oscillators, which is not so good. It also requires a fair bit more of the aluminium casing. Not that that is an issue because we are producing a lot of that. It takes rubber and it takes circuit boards. Now I could produce these. It's not a problem. I have the I have the resources available. Not sure about the crystal oscillators, but I think I would be able to fulfill the need uh, if I just scale down on uh, the. Uh, I think the cater. No, this is where I'm using the crystal oscillators. So 1.25 versus uh, 1.5, so it doesn't really add that much, but the circuit boards 
instead of computers and 30 aluminium casing uh, as opposed to 67.5 and then also add the 45 rubber. I'm not sure that I really want to do that just yet. Um, I am producing um, with the radio control units. Each of them are producing 2.5 per minute. So I am producing quite a few of them. Of course, if the Ultron recipe, I would be producing 4.5 per minute. But I don't know how many I'm going to need of them yet. And it's not that much of a bother to, to replace them. I don't remember if I over or underclocked any of these. Let's go have a look at the last one. It would have been the last or the first one if I over underclock. I'm quite meticulous about putting that at the first or last machine. No. So all of them are producing at 100% speed. 2.5 per minute. Which means that we're producing 20? 20 radio control units per minute. And hopefully that'll last us for some time. That is the most important bits and pieces from the last episode. Now, if you want to see all of the construction that I've done since then, everything without any skips is actually on the screen in, in the stream archive. There was an issue with my microphone in episode 3.2 which is why you have episode 321 and episode 322. I'm not sure I fixed it in episode 322 either. It got better, but it wasn't perfect there. And I do apologize for that. But it is at least uh, there uh, so that you guys can, uh, can see it. But I have added a warning to episode uh, 32, both of them, that the audio level on my voice is a bit off. Um, of the scale actually because when I'm recording in OBS I can see how far the volume goes up there's a very nice meter there and usually I prefer that to be in the yellow or barely into the red but in that episode every time I said something almost it went full red uh, which uh, means that I I feel that I was overpowering and someone did mention to me that it was so loud that they actually had to turn down the volume on their uh, computer while watching the stream, which is not ideal. Uh, this is another example of something that I have to clean up. I need to move these foundations for the ramps one step further to the uh, south uh, on both of these. I have to sneeze. Sorry about that. Um, but they have added a very nice new thing. The power poles and the fences no longer clip uh, or they no, they long, no longer encroach. So you can put a power pole inside of a fence without getting the uh, encroaching, uh, encroaching others clearance or invalid aim messages. Uh, which means that I have this nice little line going along here and that's where the problem with these ramps came into the, the question because I need the power to come from these and go down the lines so but with that I actually think that I managed to hold this episode fairly short which is uh, amazing uh, there are a few other things that I did. Uh, we can go to the hub so that I can show that since that's basically what I've uh, done since the last episode in uh, a very verbose uh, manner. Um, in the hub, I unlocked the tier 7 technology of aeronautical engineering. This means that I got the uh, ability to make sulfuric acid and that is why we are going to tap the bauxite, I remember now. Because the uh, sulfuric acid, for some bizarre reason, requires... Um, no, not the sulfuric acid. It was something else here. Something... Was it the battery? I think it's the battery. Yes, the battery requires alumina solution. I'm not sure why you would mix sulfuric acid and alumina solution in a battery. But... If they say they need that, that's what they need. 
This is going to be produced in the blender as well, which is uh, interesting. And uh, the batteries, well, I need them because I want to use the new drones. And the drones can only be powered by batteries, so can't put coal in those and expect them to fly off, apparently. Which makes sense. I don't think they have a combustion engine. The drones have an inventory, slot, uh, inventory size of 9 slots, which is useful. And each drone port will be able to accommodate one drone each, so that's going to be uh, interesting. We also got the new assembly director system, which is uh, one of the new project parts. We got the supercomputers, which I haven't even looked at, to be honest. And in tier 8, I unlocked the advanced aluminium production. Uh, they haven't finished the... Uh, uh, character strings for uh, English United Kingdom so it still says the wrong spelling here my apologies to my American audience but I do prefer aluminium as I am sure you're all aware the advanced aluminium production gave me the resource well pressurizer the resource well extractor so I can now tap those resource wells but be aware and we're going to get to that at the point you can overclock these to get more out of the uh, resource well extractors. You overclock the central thing, the pressurizer. The power demand. Now that's a story that we are going to revisit. Because if you overclock that, that thing drains power like crazy. <laughs> Sorry. We also got the scanner for water well, crude oil well and nitrogen gas well. So I have unlocked the ability to... Uh, to um, make gas wells which is uh which is nice and of course uh finally uh in this tier we also unlocked the uh heat sink which is why i got that alternate recipe the cooling system and the fused modular frame or as i like to call them the new tactical borg cubes because now the old tactical borg cubes are just borg cubes the small one are still baby borg cubes of course so if we take a look at those recipes, we have the heat sink. Standard recipe takes eight alclad aluminium sheets and nine copper sheets to make two, 10 per minute. Whether this one that I unlocked takes three casings and four rubber into two and still 10 per minute. And this recipe is superior to this one because it's much easier to make a lot of these than it is to make a lot of these. The copper sheets are not that relevant, but the Alclad aluminium sheets are. Then we got the uh, cooling system. It takes, made in a blender, takes two heat sinks, rather six per minute, two rubber, and again rather six per minute, five water, which would be 15 per minute. No, it's actually more than that. It's 20, 20, Ah, this is why I usually put up the facilities instead. 5 times 6 is 30. 2 times 6 is 12. 25 times 6 is 150. So we're going to need nitrogen gas for these. And these are the cooling system. Uh, those are used in, uh, in other things. Um, I don't remember exactly what, but I think they are used for... Um, turbo motors? I don't remember. The fused modular frames as well takes nitrogen gas, it takes regular Borg cubes uh, and some aluminium casing. So uh, we are going to need more aluminium, that's for sure. Uh, they produce at a rate of 1.5 per minute in the blender again since they take the nitrogen gas. As for the drones themselves, you can build those uh, here I think? No, maybe in not in the MAM. I don't... Are they produced here? No. Maybe they are produced in the... Uh, not not that. Maybe they are produced here. Transportation. Yeah, they are. So I can already produce the drones. You can see that they take four engines. They take ten outclad, one radio control unit, two AI limiters, and one miner. Those uh, weird little portable miners. A drone port, uh, I can not produce them yet because I do not have um, high speed connectors automated yet. So that is on the, wow, that thing is big. 
that's not a problem. Um, so these are also on the agenda, but I do need batteries before I even start bothering building these because I'm not going to spend lots of lots of coupons on buying batteries. Uh, I also did unlock the uh, the uh, lights. I need to experiment with those. Uh, the um, the basic look of the lights is not pleasant. It's very much like the uh, flashlight, just even stronger, and it gives off that horrible lens flare that I'm not fond of whatsoever. If you feel that the night is too dark, this is a little tip that I was tipped about from Wally1169. Uh, and it is a very handy tip. If you go into video and set the gamma to 2.3, it doesn't make the days annoying and it makes the night a little bit more visible if you're not using light sources. So until always day or and rather all the mods are back in the game, that is at least one way to make the night a little bit more tenable. With that, I think that we shall wrap up this episode, so if you have questions or comments, as always, please do, fe do feel free to leave those in the comment section of the video. And uh, you are also, of course, very welcome to um, pop into Twitch. Uh, I do not have a set schedule for my streaming yet. Uh, I don't know if I will even be able to have a set schedule, but I will be streaming fairly frequently that is for sure but it might be infrequently uh, there is um, uh, a widget on my twitch page which you can uh, see how i've been streaming the past uh, month i think it makes a kind of statistic of that but hopefully i will be streaming evenings into the night european time so that i kind of cross over both for my european and my American audience, uh, which is the two primary sources of my audience. All of the streams that I upload to Twitch, as long as it makes sense, will be uploaded to YouTube as well, uh, as you may already have noticed from both the Evil Genius 2 um, stream I did, and of course also the uh, Space Space Startopia. I am still very unhappy that they made the name Space Space, because I don't call it a Space Space, so my brain wants to call it a Star Base. But the game's name is Space Base Startopia. Not Star Base Startopia, but Space Base. And finally, of course, you are very welcome to join us in the Discord server as well, where we have dedicated a channel for Satisfactory and many community games up and running. And as soon as there is a dedicated server for uh, Satisfactory, we will be running a Satisfactory community game as well. Maybe even two, depending on how many players it supports. With that, thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you all in the next episode.